This first question is from Neil, and a lot of you might think, well, this doesn't apply to me, but kind of sooner or later, it does. So here we go. Uh, I have recently accepted a new position at my company, yay for me, he says, that will require me to travel about 75% of the time, which is tough. Uh, make sure your uh, relationships are square at home. Um, I mean, I would spend a lot of time thinking about uh, laundry. I think a lot of time about luggage, uh, how you're going to pack. These are, uh, and this is from my own personal experience. Uh, that's when I started becoming a one uh, one bag traveler. Uh, there's lots of great sites out there that talk about traveling light. Uh, I would take their advice. The training is simple enough. I am planning to just do calisthenics whenever the hotel gyms are ill-equipped. Um, I would also recommend a glute loop and a mini band. The glute loop takes this much space and the mini band takes this much. And I can do hip thrust clamshells, those monster walks, backward walking. I can do all kinds of things in my lower body. And uh, recently, I even started playing around with these like band pull-aparts. Not perfect, but hey, it's better than nothing, as you say here. But his question is this. But I was wondering if you have any advice for someone looking to eat clean while on the road. Before accepting this position, I was eating a caloric deficit, trying to lose some extra adipose tissue, and will now spend long hours in the car. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You're in a car. I got to tell you, Neil, right there, you have a huge advantage over me because I have to fly everywhere. Uh, yeah, the number of times I've driven to workshops in the state uh, in a year would be one or two. Uh, if I have 40 workshops uh, in a year like I did uh, a couple years back, one would be in state where I could drive to. So uh, there's huge advantages for you, but let's get there first. My concern is after a long day of work and the prospect coming home to an empty hotel room, will lead me to want to swipe the company card and fried foods and adult beverages. Any advice for staying disciplined with diet while on the road? Well, now you have a car. So if you have a car, you can also pack some extra equipment. But let's just do it this way. We'll break it into two parts. We'll go airplane only travel. Now, when you fly, there's a couple areas I'd focus on. Again, this is going to help you with eating, but make sure you have an eye mask. You have, you know, some kind of uh, noise reducing either earplugs or, or phones. I, I use the Music Cozy. It's an eye mask with a built-in um, earplugs, uh, uh, stereo earplugs, you know. Uh, I also buy those magic pajamas online. And as I've said many times, uh, you can disagree with them, but, you know, they, they prevent bed, bed bugs. So, yay. <laughs> um, sleep is going to be big. Sleep and I'm going to say hydration. And I mean, mean drinking water. Drinking water are big. Uh, uh, those would be your those would be your foundational things. I was told now whether it's true or not, I don't know, but it certainly chimes with my experience that the first night in a hotel room is always bad. So if you're going from hotel to hotel to hotel, your sleep is going to get impacted a lot. So you're going to have to take the hotel room sleep very seriously. Uh, that I've heard some interesting things lately. Uh, one person said that they always travel with one of their own uh, pillow cases because the pillow case has your smells on it, and that seems to help. Hey, I don't do that, but it was a pretty simple piece of advice in a pillow case. Heck, the pillow case can be used to hold, you know, I don't know, something, you know. Uh, when it comes to food, on the road, you have to be a little careful. And I tell you something, when you eat at restaurants every day, you're gonna order the salad because you're, know, oh, it's salad. But the dressings and the croutons and all the other stuff they throw into restaurant salads, sometimes those calorie numbers are through the roof. Uh, when California first started having the calories published, you could hear a collective, oh, when people looked at how much was in some of the salads they were getting at restaurants. Uh, I like the idea of kind of just uh, simplifying your meals out. I always order extra vegetables on the road. People who have been with me at workshops, at the RKCs, at the uh, North Carolina workshops, they will see that I go out of my way to order extra vegetables. Uh, I think one of the best foods you can eat on the road, and you can disagree with this, and but I think fajitas with extra vegetables are amazing. Uh, again, you can disagree with me. But when you look at the amount of meat that's in a fajita, it's usually, it's it's just fine. But very often, especially if you order extra veggies, which I don't think 
a lot of places don't even charge you for, you, you really can get full and it's a very delicious meal. You know, add your hot sauces. Someone's going to raise your hand. Don't hot sauces have salt? Yeah, well, you're on the road. You're doing your best. And that's why that other level called, I said hydration, but drinking water is so important. There's a new thing out now. I don't remember exactly what it's called. It might be called Borg or something like that, where when you go to like a party, you take a gallon of water, you add those liquid IVs or Vitalites to it, and then you add the amount of alcohol you want to drink that night. And then you kind of mix it up and you drink with it. Now, I'm not saying you should, you know, I don't want you driving down the road with a gallon of, you know, Jack Daniels and some liquid IV. And, and good luck if you do that. Um, but the idea of, of having something like that, it doesn't have to be a, a bottle, it can be, but some some kind of container, uh, larger if you can, that maybe you put, uh, there are some electrolytes out now, I think one's called Element maybe, that it's just a small little powder and you pop it in, has no sugar in it. Uh, something along those lines, I've had people tell me they travel with bigger things, with servings, and this, this isn't something I would do, but they put their creatine in it, uh, they put their element in it, some other things, and they drank that all day long. I, you know, your mileage may vary, but I I mean, if if you just do what we used to do, in fact, I got this from Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, in his book, The Education of a Bodybuilder, is you get like a gallon and you squeeze uh, lemon juice in it and you add just a tiny bit of salt. I'm sure there's better salts out there today, but, and you, you, you drink that throughout the day. So a fairly large container with just a hint of just a little tiny bit of I'm sure some of the potassium salts I'm sure like the elements and those magic things are even better um, you drink that throughout the day uh, and so you can stay ahead on your water your hydration if you got a good night's sleep and you stay ahead on your water you might make better choices at meals uh, no matter where I go, whether it's International House of Pancakes or Taco Bell, there are always choices to be made, especially if you can come in there with a, a good night's sleep and some water. Um, if you know when you when you if you can go online and find a fast food place that you you frequent, uh, I said Taco Bell because you know I went online one time and I looked up Taco Bell and. and and if you if you choose wisely on the menu, you can do pretty well. Um, it's it's going to have to be that kind of thing. So, yeah, obviously it's going to be vegetables, protein, water, obviously. But try to do your best to order extra veggies on the side. Uh, I or uh, any place that has, uh, uh, you know, they'll have a, they'll have entrees here, and then they'll have like side orders. I always look at the side orders to see if I can put together a meal too. I have eaten at places, and I'm not trying to be that guy uh, where you, where I order two or three like side or order appetizer things to get myself kind of satiated, and then I relook at the menu and I'm like, instead of ordering, you know, I don't know, spaghetti mixed with ravioli, ravioli, you know, mixed with macaroni and cheese, mixed with I don't know, pancakes. Uh, I, I can then choose something a little bit, you know, uh, uh, more, uh, I don't know, mature, more, <laughs> more big fit kid food. Uh, there are issues with that. Now, there's one other thing. So that's airplane travel. Since you're traveling uh, with your car, I mean, uh, I would, I would strongly recommend you get a cooler. Uh, I think there are certain vegetables that travel well. Uh, I know, I know that sliced zucchini travels well. Carrots travel well, uh, peppers travel very well, onions, and I would pre I would do yourself a favor and try to have everything pre-sliced, pre-cut. Personally, I would use Pyrex uh, because I think that holds better. Uh, it um, If you have Pyrex containers inside of a cooler, uh, they're not they're not going to get as wet. They're not going to get as mushy. This is my experience. Um, you could probably bring something like I, I, my overnight oats on the road. That's where I take uh, vanilla protein powder, cinnamon. I put seeds in and then I put oatmeal. 
you stir the dry ingredients up, you add water to it, and you let it sit overnight. And it's really quite good. Uh, I used to spend a lot more time on it doing all kinds of extra stuff, but that little combination by itself is, is all you really need in my experience. Um, if you do pull over and you got a chance, there are, I don't know of too many supermarkets now that don't have like salmon, um, uh, locks, uh, which is just an outstanding. I mean, if you have, <laughs> if you bring back locks to your room, okay, you'll be careful. It might stink up the room, but locks back to your room and you have, you know, your little buffet of, you know, your instant oats and your, uh, overnight oats and your, uh, your veggies. That's a pretty good meal. And, you know, drink your water. Um, the one thing I would think about now, if you're going to drink alcohol on the road and, and I, I'm not going to yay or nay on that. One of the things I would recommend is I would start carrying packets of crystal light with you. And, uh, one of the things I learned from low carb Chris, this would be 22, 23 years ago, maybe 24 years ago. Um, she would mix, uh, crystal light lemon flavored crystal light with a variety of alcoholic drinks and make them very tall with, you know, just a, a, a little bit of, you know, like a shot of tequila in crystal lemon, crystal light. She called it a low carburita. And there's all kinds of little drinks you can make. Uh, and I would, I would, if you're going to drink adult beverages, what I'm trying to get across is lots of volume, a little bit of alcohol. Uh, you don't mention coffee, but one of the things I do find, and if you're driving, I would buy, I would buy myself a little hot pot, uh, a hot, it, it uh, an electric kettle is what they're called in Europe. It boils water. You can make oatmeal with, don't ever put it in the pot, but with the hot water, you can make oatmeal. You can make, uh, you can make coffee. I always travel with Folgers, uh, minis, but if in your case, I'd have crystals. Uh, I would take a variety of teas and, uh, and especially some herbal teas for a night to, you know, just give yourself, just give yourself something to drink while you're maybe doing some night work or watching TV, drinking, uh, an herbal tea is probably a better choice than, uh, Jack Daniels on the road. I, I hope that helped. I like this question. Um, staying disciplined on the road, as you ask here is all about preparation. In fact, I gotta tell you. Even as a coach, I think discipline is just another word for preparation. That's pretty good. That's that's not a bad statement. Discipline is just another word for preparation. That's not bad. All right. Hope that helped.